Have you ever wondered why your parents named you what they named you? I mean, sometimes we're named because of a family member or a friend or maybe sometimes a celebrity. Some people are named after cities or significant places that their parents went. Some people simply pick names out of a book. But names usually mean something and they give us identity. They point us back to the person who eventually named us. So today we're going to talk about a man whose name got changed by God. We've been talking a lot about a crazy family. A family where a dad and mom didn't wait for God. A family where a God asked a dad to sacrifice a son. A family where a son and a mother deceived a father. A family where brothers hated each other. But throughout all that dysfunction, God chose to use this family to bless the whole world. Do you ever feel like you have too much sin or too much failure for God to use you? I can imagine that Jacob tended to feel this way. He probably regretted lying to his father, he regretted tricking his brother, and he recognized it every morning when he woke up far from his home, away from his family. But God could still use him because God can change someone who told lies, deceived, and ran into someone who is the father of the nation of Israel. So go ahead and open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 35 and take some time and read verses 1 through 8. God tells Jacob to go to Bethel. Jacob decides that all the family idols that they've brought with them need to be put away. So Jacob goes and God protects him and his family as they go to Bethel. And then Jacob builds an altar to worship God. You see, even though Jacob made some bad decisions, God has done a lot for Jacob. In this moment, Jacob is thinking about all the ways that God has blessed him. That's because reflecting on what God has done for us strengthens us. See, it's a good practice for us to think about all the things that God has done for us. So what are some things that God has done for you? So Jacob and his family, they leave Bethel and God comes to them again. So this time read verses 9 through 15. See, this time, God changes Jacob's name. He had previously done it back in Genesis 32, but he reminds him here that this is still his plan. And then God tells him to have as many children so that the promised blessings that were given to his grandfather Abraham would be fulfilled. You see, God is always working his plan. He has a carefully crafted, thought out, specific, and purposeful plan for humanity. And we have the opportunity to be part of it. It meant financially and family blessings for Jacob, uh, I mean Israel, uh, but, but for you and I, it may mean something completely different. So here are some things that God affirms in Jacob through these verses. First, a great nation would come through Jacob, right? This is the nation of Israel. Second, the foundation for the nation was not Jacob, but rather God himself. The nation would have royalty as it grew, such as David, Solomon, and many others. Third, Jacob's lineage would be a blessing to the entire world. That through Jesus, God would provide not just redemption for Israel, but through the whole world. Much of God's plan is available to us through scripture. And so what are some specific instructions God gives us through his word? Then Jacob and his family left there, seemingly to go on with the rest of their lives. But things didn't always go smoothly from then on. So now take some time, read chapter 35, 16 through 29. And so Jacob's wife dies. His son does something terrible and his father dies. Sounds like a rough time. Imagine all this happening right after God promises to make your family into a great nation. It's kind of a rough start. 
Jacob has to trust that God is with him in the good, but also in the bad. And if it's true for us, well, often we feel connected to God when things are going well, but when things aren't, it's harder to believe that God is with us. We have to trust that God is with us through the ups and the downs in life. When family members are healthy, when relationships are conflict-free, and when we feel taken care of and loved, but also in sickness and brokenness, when we feel alone, God is there. So what are ways that you can trust God even when things are not going well? God used Jacob to live out his plan to redeem the world. Jacob wasn't the best of the best. He made a ton of mistakes and life wasn't always easy for him. But he knew that if he did his best to follow God, to keep his commandments and to serve him, that God would be faithful to Jacob and turn him into the person God wanted. Maybe you feel like you're not important enough, not sinless enough, not bold enough, or maybe not Christian enough, whatever that means, to be used by God. So let me offer you this hope, that God is bigger, better, and in control, so you don't have to be anymore. And you don't have to be more than what God created you to be.